Hello my friends, and today, despite a decrease in the number of attacks, the fighting along the front line hasn't decreased. So, and the Russians uh, continue to instill fear globally, showcasing footage from the first phase of exercises involving their practical training and use of non-strategic nuclear weapons. So whether it will lead to nuclear war remains a big question, but the Russians seem eager. Uh, however, even without nuclear war, the situation is becoming increasingly difficult by the day so and now let's move on to the situation along the front line and starting with the Kharkiv direction so uh, the occupies uh, here are continuing their attempts to break through to the settlement of Lipci and they are advancing from two directions simultaneously aiming to reach the outskirts and move through the fields from the east however there have been no changes along the front line for several days although the fighting continues in the Vovchansk area so fighting is also ongoing and the Russians continue to bring in reinforcements to try and fully capture the village and offensive actions have also been reported near the village of Staritsa so but over the past day the front line remains unchanged despite 12 attacks so Russian aviation has dropped uh, dropped bombs on uh, Vovchansk also uh, Lipti and uh, and here and in Beli Kolodis, so so there were three bombs, which they plan to reach. And according to foreign analysts, this is where their main defensive lines are located. So Krakens found a mansion that uh, defense lines started being built two to three months before the offensive in the Kharkiv direction. So. Uh, the first defensive line began construction in the Kharkiv region two or three months before the offensive, although it was liberated a year and a half ago, said Krakens founder Nemichev. The officials who signed off on the fortifications were removed. The question is, will they be punished? The responsibility for mining lies with the units that stood at the border for a year and a half and didn't prepare positions, and with the regional authorities who did didn't evacuate the border area. Their territorial defense forces don't have enough heavy weapons to conduct full-scale combat operations. And Nemechev noted that uh, our troops uh, responded in time, so the Russian armed forces may attempt to storm other sections of the border, but the element of surprise is gone. So, moreover, mm, the situation with Shalin is not expected to improve anytime soon. So, according to recent statements, the Russians have managed to accumulate 10,000 S-300 missiles. The daily use of bombs is their huge advantage. They have accumulated 10,000 S-300 missiles. 10,000 is again their advantage, said the Ukrainian leader commented on Western countries' restriction on using their weapons for strikes on Russia. So, and now let's return to the front line, because in the Kupinsk direction, activity has been significant with nine assaults over the past day, and the attacks are focused on just two villages, it's Sinkivka and Ivanivka. So, despite all the difficulties, the Ukrainian armed forces continue to hold the defense and the front line has remained unchanged over the past day. In the Svatova direction, the occupiers continue their attempts to break through around Berestova, and they have shelled uh, Novoplatonivka and Sergeyevka, it's so small villages, and there is a possibility that the front line here is unstable, and the Ukrainian armed forces are working to regain lost territory. So, in the Krimina direction, fighting continues for the village of Terni. So, with no movement on the front line for months. Uh, however, the Ukrainian armed forces are effectively targeting and destroying Russian equipment. So, recently, a Russian tank was detected 
by a drone in the Crimina era and subsequently destroyed. So, very good. Uh, in the Siversk direction, uh, the Shalin of Bilohorivka uh, with Grad rockets indicated that the Russians lied about capturing the village. So, according to the general staff, battles are still ongoing there. And additionally, fighting continues in the Vyimka and Rozdolivka areas. But the Russians haven't achieved any success in these locations. Uh, in the Chasivyar direction, so the occupiers continue their attempts to directly enter the city, attacking the Novi micro district. And similarly, they are unable to fully take control over Ivanovska, so battles persist. And uh, Klesheyevka and Andreevka are also under continuous assault, but there have been no changes on the front line in the Pokrovsk direction. So, the situation is the most difficult, with the highest number of attacks, and over the past day, 33 assaults were recorded, so the occupiers still cannot reach the highway, so they are intensifying their attacks on Novo Alexandrovka, Arkhangelsk and Kalinovo. So, uh, and uh, significant forces have been deployed to advance uh, west uh, of Novogrodivka, so leading to renewed attacks on the village of Progress. And assaults continue on uh, Yevhenivka, the village of Sokil, Novoselivka Persha, uh, um, so also uh, Umansky and Netailova and Yasnobrodivka. So despite uh, the high activity of the Russians, there have been no changes on the front line here, with the Ukrainian forces are holding their defense. Uh, in the Kurahwe direction, so battles are ongoing for Krasnohorivka, and assaults on Georgievka have resumed. Shalin continues along the front line and in the rear, but there have been no new Russian successes and the front line remains unchanged over the past day. In the Vuhledar direction. So there are battles for Staromayorsky. However, elsewhere along the front line, no significant activity has been recorded and there are no changes. In the Zaporizhia direction, so the occupiers have significantly uh, reduced their activity with only Shalin being recorded. So no attacks have been conducted since the capture of Robotina. And in the Kherson direction, um, attacks on the village of Krynke continue along with Shalin of the right bank. However, the Russians have made no progress and the Ukrainian forces still hold their positions. So, uh, Russian war correspondents even claim that uh, no assaults are taking place and that Putin has already been informed that Krynke is under Russian control. So, uh, in the Kherson direction, there were no assaults on Krynke today. And why would there be? Why assault when uh, the 76th uh, Airborne Division liberated Krynke for the uh, up-teens time yesterday? There were also no raids on the islands today. Okay, uh, but today, so everyone is concerned about the fact that China and Russia pose a significant threat to the world. And uh, Blinken made a statement regarding this. People's Republic of China is pursuing military, economic and geopolitical preeminence, challenging our vision for a free, open, secure and prosperous international order. Russia is committing aggression, not only against Ukraine, but against the principles at the heart of the United Nations Charter, sovereignty, territorial integrity, independence. So, and today the Russians um, decided to shift borders not only in Ukraine. So, the Russian government 
uh, registered changes in maritime borders with Lithuania and Finland. They were published on the portal of legal acts of the Russian Federation. And according to the document, Russia intends to declare a part of the eastern Gulf of Finland and areas near the cities of uh, Baltisk and Zelenogradsk in the Kaliningrad region of the Russian Federation as its internal waters. Authorities in Lithuania and Finland have commented on Russians' intentions, yes. So, why suddenly? <laughs> it's unclear. And then Russia accuses NATO countries of starting a war. So, it's evident that Russia is provoking. So, what do you think about this? How should one react to such changes? <laughs> oh, and that's all from me. So, please don't forget like this video, subscribe to the channel and of course hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.